Chapter 5, Section 4, Process Model Quality Assurance. We need to make sure that our process models are of good quality. We can distinguish three different quality aspects. There is syntactic quality. And verification techniques help us check them. There's semantic quality, and validation methods help us check them. And there's pragmatic quality, and we use certification. Let's start with syntactic quality. The structural correctness and behavioral correctness. Validation, we will look into validity and completeness. And for pragmatic quality, we will have a look at understandability, maintainability, and learning. Structural correctness is the first matter that we need to consider. Here we see an example of a BPMN model that is not structurally correct. It is obvious that elements should be all connected. We have the reject order that is dangling. Currently an arc is missing from the gateway. There is emit invoice and the arc pointing away from it is obviously not correctly connected with the gateway that follows. The result is a structurally not correct BPMN model. We need to fix all these structural incorrectnesses to make our model nice. A bit more difficult to check is behavioral correctness. It is also referred to as soundness. Soundness is a criterion that was defined for PetriNet models. It requires three conditions to hold. First, there must be an option to complete. That means any case that is processed must have the chance to reach one of the output events. The second property says we need to have proper completion. This means when we reach the end event, it should not be the case that anything can still be done in the process. And there should not be any bad activities. That means all activities that we represent should be potentially being able to be executed. These are technical requirements that can be checked with automatic formal tools for process verification. And these verification tools search in the BPMN model for patterns like these. Let's start on the left-hand side, top. There is an example of what is called a lack of synchronization. On the left-hand side is an end split. The end split activates broke branches. On the right-hand side is an XOR gateway that merges these two branches. That means both branches can be executed. And it means that we potentially execute anything that is later than the XOR, XOR join might be executed double. On the left-hand side, bottom is an example of a deadlock. On the left-hand side is an XOR split. And that makes sure that only one of the subsequent options is activated. The end join on the right hand side waits for both branches to complete. But as only one of these branches is activated, it is never possible that both of them would complete. That means the process gets stuck or gets deadlocked at this end join. On the right hand side, 
we see an example of a potential lack of synchronization, which is also a potential deadlock. The example has an OR split gateway on the left-hand side. This may activate one or the other or both of the subsequent branches. If you have both branches activated, you have the same problem as with the lack of synchronization. If you activate only one branch, and on the right-hand side is not an XOR, but an AND join, you have also the situation similar to the deadlock. Finally, on the right-hand side bottom, is an example of a so-called live lock. This is a never-ending loop. You start this loop by entering the loop through the X or join gateway on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, you have an end split. That means any time you reach this end split, you activate the branch outside the loop and also the branch inside the loop. And this way, you can never stop processing this loop. All these patterns here are patterns that do not make much sense from a logical perspective. Verification tools help us to automatically identify such incorrect behavior. The second aspect of quality is semantic quality. Semantic quality cannot be checked automatically. We need to validate. That means we need to build on the expertise of the domain expert in our validation. By interacting and asking the domain expert, we want to find out if the model that we're trying to model is valid. That means everything that is represented in the model is actually correct and relevant. And we also want to make sure that our model is complete. That means everything that should be represented is actually represented. The process analyst has to carefully ask questions in order to check these key aspects. Key is that validation cannot be done based on the model alone. Validation builds on the relationship between the model and the actual real-world process as the domain experts understand them. So let's consider again our example of the orders that are forwarded as suborders to the Amsterdam and the Hamburg warehouse. Remember, that was the example that we used to introduce the OR join and the OR split. The idea of that process is that we may have three situations. It may be that we forward suborders to Amsterdam. It may be that we forward suborders to Hamburg. And it may be the case that we forward suborders to both warehouses. However, it can never be the case that we forder, forward no suborder at all to any warehouse. So what can we say about the semantic quality of this model? There is an issue. It's invalid because we potentially may bypass any of the forwarding activities. That means after the end split, we may choose to select the path order does not contain Amsterdam products, as well as the path order does not contain Hamburg products. If that is the case, we do not produce any suborders. Apparently, this is not what is really happening. That means this model is semantically not correct, according to the description of the process.
what about this model? Here we see that there is an XOR split. We have to choose to either produce suborders for Amsterdam or for Hamburg. This model is not complete. Apparently, we cannot represent the fact that it is also possible to have orders for Amsterdam and for Hamburg. This means this model is also semantically not correct, but for a different reason. It may be the case that we have suborders produced for both of these resonances. Now let's look at pragmatic quality. It is not only that our models have to be syntactically and semantically correct, they also have to be efficient and effective for the people working with them. There are different concerns of usability. Models should be understandable, maintainable, and facilitate learning. Different model characteristics, such as size, structure, and layout, influence the usability. Let's first look at the labeling of the activities and events in the process. There are some conventions that have been established to make the labels effective. A recommendation is that activities should be written with an imperative verb and a corresponding noun. Events should also refer to a noun and a past participle verb. We should also write conditions on the outgoing arcs of OR and XOR splits with a reference to a particular object of the process. Furthermore, we should also make sure that the layout is nice. Models should run from top left to bottom right. And we should use direct arcs with no crossings. Look at the two models at the bottom of this picture. The left-hand side is exactly the same as the one on the right-hand side, with the only difference that the layout is effective on the right-hand side. You see what a difference it makes in the impression and reading of this process model. Beauty is not an option. Make sure that your models look nice. Various guidelines have been formulated to help making models nice. One set of guidelines are the seven process modeling guidelines. Guideline one says we should use as few elements as possible in the model. In this way, we can make sure that the model is compact and easy to understand. We should also try to minimize the routing paths per element. In this way, the model is also nicer and easier to read. In many cases, we can represent the choice as a yes and no choice between two objects. Third, we should use one start event and one end event if that is possible. It has to be clear what triggers the process and what outcomes the process has. Sometimes we want to represent that there's a positive and a negative outcome. Guideline 4 says that we should create models that are structured. Structured models have corresponding gateways of the same type. This means that an X or split has a corresponding XOR join. An AND split has a corresponding AND join. And an OR split has a corresponding OR join. In this way, we can nicely structure the model as opening and closing brackets. Rule 5 says we should avoid OR gateways where possible. 
Sometimes, in very specific situations, or gateways are very helpful, but we should use them scarcely, because for some readers of the model, they are quite complex. Guideline 6 says we should use verb object activity labels. And finally, guideline 7 says we should decompose the model that has more than 30 elements. This is a rule of thumb. The model should not be too big and too crowded. Otherwise, it is difficult to understand. Let's have a look at an exercise that we have in our book in relation to the seven process modeling guideline. It is about a complaint. A complaint is triggered by a phone call by a complaining customer. It is decided whether the complaint can be handled or whether it has to be referred to an internal or external party. An external referral leads to a telephone confirmation to the external party. An internal referral is added to the incident agenda. If no referral is needed, a complaint analysis is conducted and the complainant is contacted. In either case, the complaint is archived and the case is closed. What you see below is a BPMN model that domain experts have created. This is a real-world example. You may be surprised how complicated this model looks like. You can use the seven process modeling guidelines to check what can be done to redesign this process and make it easier to understand. You may be surprised how easy this model is to understand after revision. Have a look into the book to see how this model looks like. Let's recap. We recap. We have seen that process discovery involves defining the setting, gathering information, conducting modeling, and assuring model quality. There are various discovery methods, such as document analysis, observation, automatic process discovery, interviews and workshops. A modeling method proceeds by identifying process boundaries, then activities and events, then resources and their handoffs, then the control flow, and finally additional elements. Quality assurance relates to syntactic, semantic, and pragmatic qualities. 